Yum, yum. Floyd here with a quick introduction to selection modes and plasticity. By default, all selection modes are active, which enables you to select objects, control points, edges, and faces. You can limit the selection to a particular selection mode by simply clicking on the modes button you'd like to work with, or use the keyboard shortcuts. One for control points, two for edges, three for faces, four for bodies, or five to return to all selection modes. Holding the control key with one, two, three, or four enables you to convert between selection modes. For example, if I have this face selected and use control two, I can convert the face selection to an edge selection. Selection plays a large role in asset creation, so you'll want to be familiar with these options. Floyd here with a quick introduction to edge loop and ring selection and plasticity. Press and hold the Alt key and click on an edge to select an edge loop, or press and hold the Control and Alt key together and click on an edge to select an edge ring. Use these handy selection modifiers to speed up edge selection. Floyd here with a quick look at the Select Adjacent command in Plasticity. To use the Select Adjacent command, start by making a selection, then press F on the keyboard and locate Select Adjacent. This handy command can be a quick way to grow or expand a selection with ease. Floyd here with a quick look at the Disable Selection and Viewport option in Plasticity. To lock an item and prevent it from being selected in the viewport, make a selection, press F on the keyboard, type Lock, and click Lock Selected. A lock icon will appear next to the name in the outliner, and you'll no longer be able to select it in the viewport. Use the lock icon again to toggle between locked and unlocked. Disabling selection in the viewport can be extremely useful in densely populated scenes, so be sure to make note of this handy option. Floyd here with a quick tip for selecting by direction and plasticity. It's important to note that the direction you select from plays a role in what gets selected. When left-clicking and dragging from the left side of the screen, the entire object must be selected in order for it to be selected. While left-clicking and dragging from the right side of the viewport, even objects that are partially selected will be selected. This is true in all selection modes. Spend some time and get familiar with this selection concept to gain full control over selecting and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick tip for selecting parallel faces and plasticity. To select parallel faces, simply press and hold the Control alt keys and left-click on a face. All parallel faces will be selected. Add this selection method to your toolkit to speed up selecting faces. Floyd here with a quick look at the Find Boundary Edges command in Plasticity. To quickly find and select boundary edges, click the Find Boundary Edges icon in the lower right corner of the UI. Any open edges on the selected object will be selected. If the boundary edges make up a hole, you can quickly cap the holes using the Patch Holes command. Floyd here with a quick tip for selecting occluded faces in Plasticity. To select an occluded face, start by clicking and holding the left mouse button, and use the mouse scroll wheel to cycle through the occluded faces. When the face you want to select is pre-highlighted, release the mouse button and you're all set. Use this handy selection method to speed up selecting faces. Floyd here with a quick tip for selecting all items in a group in Plasticity. Simply press and hold the Alt key and left click on a group in the outliner and all items in that group will be selected. Use this handy option to speed up selection in Plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at Snap to Grid and Grid Size in Plasticity. To enable the Snap to Grid option, Simply click the Snap to Grid toggle in the upper right corner of the UI. Once enabled, elements will snap to the grid when editing and creating geometry. You can change the grid size using the plus and minus buttons located under the Snap to Grid toggle, where the grid size is displayed as well. If you'd like to assign Snap to Grid to a hotkey, press F on the keyboard, type Snap, then right-click Toggle Grid Snapping and use the Assign Shortcut option. Floyd here with a quick look at Object Snaps and Plasticity. When Object Snaps is enabled, you can easily snap to faces, curves, and edges. You can disable Object Snapping completely using the Enable Snapping toggle, or click the three-dot icon next to the toggle and choose which components you'd like to toggle on and off. Use these options to refine snapping when creating and editing geometry and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at snapping to existing segments and plasticity. When creating new lines or curves, you can hover your mouse over an edge or segment and press the Shift key to create a parallel snap guide. Generate new geometry faster and more efficient using this powerful snapping option. Floyd here with a quick look at tangency snaps and plasticity. Tangency snaps appear along circle curves when connecting a line or curve. Simply move the point along the curve until you see the tangency display pop up. When using splines, use control point splines for the cleanest results. Take advantage of this powerful feature when creating curves and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick tip for snapping the view to an orthographic view in Plasticity. Pressing and holding down the Alt key 
while orbiting the view with the middle mouse button enables you to easily snap to various orthographic views such as top and front. Using this key modifier with standard free orbiting can enhance navigating around your asset, so be sure to add it to your workflow. Floyd here with a quick tip for toggling show edges and plasticity. While you can disable show edges by clicking on the show edges button in the render mode popover, I find it easier to assign it to a hotkey. Press F on the keyboard, type toggle, then right click on viewport toggle edges and select assign shortcut. Choose a key that works best for you. I've chosen the tilde key, which is easy to access. Use this simple setup to speed up working in plasticity. Oh. Floyd here with a quick look at the hide, hide unselected, and unhide commands in plasticity. You can quickly hide all selected items in a scene by pressing the H key on the keyboard, and use the keyboard shortcut Alt-H to unhide. If you'd like to hide everything that's not selected, use the keyboard shortcut Shift-H to hide unselected. Use these commands to help navigate heavily populated scenes. Floyd here with a quick look at collapsing all groups in the outliner and plasticity. You can collapse individual groups in the outliner by clicking the small caret next to the category name. Use the caret in the top right of the outliner to collapse all groups. This can be a handy feature to reduce visual noise while creating. Floyd here with a quick look at the show edges and show faces options in plasticity. If you right click on the render mode icon in the top right portion of the UI, you can toggle edge visibility using the show edges button. I often disable the show edges attribute to get a better look at the surface on my asset. You can also disable face visibility with the show faces button. Use these two options to customize how your assets are displayed in the viewport. Floyd here with a quick look at the axis view construction planes and plasticity. When creating new geometry such as curves, the curves will be positioned on the construction plane. If you start drawing a new curve on a face, the curve will be planar to that face. You can disable object snaps if you'd like to have the new curve position on the construction plane instead of the face, or you can leave the object snaps enabled and use one of the axis view construction planes located in the right side of the UI. When an axis view is used by double clicking on one of the available options, all new geometry will be created on the construction plane, even if you start drawing on a face. Add these handy construction planes to your toolkit to speed up asset creation. Floyd here with a quick look at the silhouette display mode and plasticity. You can enable the silhouette display mode by right clicking on the render mode icon in the top right corner of the viewport and selecting it from the options available. When enabled, objects will be displayed as a solid shape with no interior details. This display mode can be extremely useful when designing, since the silhouette is the most immediately recognizable and identifiable shape of an asset. Take advantage of this display mode to help aid in the design of your assets. Floyd here with a quick look at the object opacity material attribute and plasticity. Make sure the render mode is enabled, then select the objects you'd like to manipulate and press M on the keyboard to access the material attributes. By default, the opacity attribute will have a value of one, which produces an opaque surface. Reducing this value will produce a transparent material. You can disable this material attribute in the viewport by simply disabling the render mode. Use this handy material attribute to generate transparent objects. Floyd here with a quick look at the focus object and outliner command in plasticity. To quickly locate the selected object in the outliner, hover your cursor over the outliner and press the forward slash or period key. The outliner will navigate to the selection. Use this handy command to find objects in the outliner in dense scenes. Floyd here with a quick look at adjusting the perspective field of view and plasticity. You can toggle between perspective and orthographic view using the number five key on the numeric keypad or by using its icon in the top right corner of the UI. When working with perspective enabled in the viewport, you can right click the icon to adjust the field of view. Use this field of view attribute to adjust the perspective view to your liking. Floyd here with a quick look at the hide and disable and viewport options in plasticity. If you'd like to disable the visibility of the current selection, you can click the eye icon for the item or use the keyboard shortcut H. Click the icon again to unhide. Using the disable and viewport option appears to do the same thing, but has a key difference to the hide feature. Objects disabled in viewport will remain hidden even when the unhide all keyboard shortcut Alt H is used. Use a combination of these two options to allow for more visual scene control. Floyd here with a quick look at the focus and isolate commands and plasticity. If you'd like to focus the viewport on what is currently selected, press the forward slash key on the keyboard. Pressing it again will focus on everything. If you'd like to focus on the selection and hide everything else that isn't selected, use the focus and isolate command by pressing the period key on the keyboard. Pressing it again will unhide everything and focus on everything. Use these handy commands to improve working on densely populated projects. 
Floyd here with a quick look at saving and reusing custom construction planes in Plasticity. Using construction planes while creating a mesh can be incredibly useful. If you'd like to save a custom construction plane, simply left click on the temporary construction plane label at the top of the screen and it'll be added to the construction plane list on the right side of the UI. To recall the saved construction plane, simply click on it. Double clicking it will align the plane to the camera. To remove a custom plane, select it and press delete. Floyd here with a quick look at aligning the construction plane to a selection in Plasticity. Start by making a selection and then press the shift plus space bar on the keyboard. The construction plane will be aligned to the selection, enabling you to easily model with that orientation. If you'd like to align the camera to the construction plane as well, simply make a selection and press the space bar. The construction plane will be aligned to the selection and the camera will be aligned to the construction plane. Experiment with each of these options as both can be useful when creating assets. Yum, yum!